Welcome to day eight of 30 days of Lightroom. Today, we're gonna to show you how to create perfect color in your photos. Hello and welcome back to our series where we show you literally everything you need to know about Lightroom Classic. You can download all of the sample images and follow along using the link right down below. So today we're going to show you how to get perfect color. We're going to show you how to adjust your white balance and how to go in and dial specific colors to make them look fantastic. So here's our image for today. We're going to move into our develop module and we're going to start off with some basic adjustments. Let's go ahead and open this up. First thing I want to do is click on auto and you're going to see it's going to make a big change. What this did, it went ahead and worked on my highlights and my shadows and just brought my levels a little bit better so we see more information with our photograph. And you might be like, oh, cool, we're already done. <laughs> it looks great. But we also have some individual colors. Like I have some nice yellows here in the trees. I have some greens. I have some blue in the clouds. And I want to go in and be able to adjust those colors individually, not just work on the overall colors. Now you're gonna see here in the basic editor, if you scroll right down here to the very bottom, you're gonna see when I hit auto, it actually brought a little bit of vibrance into my image. So I can add more or less vibrance to my photo and you can see what that looks like. It's really nice, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna do this across the entire photograph, okay? So what we're gonna do to start with is I'm gonna bring my vibrance and my saturation back down to zero because we're gonna be editing these colors individually, okay? Now up here at the top, you have your white balance. Now with your white balance, you can definitely choose a few different white balances. If you feel like it did a great job straight out of camera with basically how it was shot, you can leave this as it is. If you feel like you need to make some adjustments, maybe it was a daylight shot, you can click here on daylight. Maybe it's a cloudy photograph, you can click on cloudy. I like this as a shot, but you can go ahead and make sure that you've got your white balance properly set. Don't forget, you can use these color sliders if you want to give your image a cooler look or a warmer look. You can do that here as well. Okay. Now, the big thing that I want to cover today is going to be right over here in our color mixer. Now, with this color mixer, we actually have a lot of tools built into the color mixer. So, we're going to start off where it says mixer, and then later we're going to move into point color. So, here with the mixer, Basically, what I like with the mixer, you have a few different options. You can click on hue, you can click on saturation, you can click on luminance, and you can click on all. Now, what I wanna do is you can see that the saturation of some of my yellows and greens, these were actually moved when I clicked on the auto button, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold alt or option and I'm gonna reset this mixer and we're gonna reset this point color as well. So you can see this is basically back to normal and you can see that auto did actually move some of the saturation of my individual color ranges. Okay, now with these, moving our hue sliders. So this works with sliders. I really like the visual representation. I think they look great. Now you can go for instance to your green slider and simply move this to the left or the right and you're gonna see it's gonna make some adjustments to the greens. You can do the same thing with saturation. You can increase or decrease the saturation of your greens and luminance. Now. What I like to do is use this little icon that actually helps me. I can simply click on the photograph and drag my hue, saturation, and lumens up or down based on that photograph. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. And I actually prefer this to be all. So I want to see my hue, saturation, and luminance all at the same time. So for instance, let's start off with our saturation, okay? I feel like the hue looks pretty good. Hue is basically like red versus orange versus yellow versus green. Saturation is the amount of color. So here's what I like to do. I like to go to my saturation and use this icon right here. Now, once I've clicked on that icon, you can see I have a little overlay on top of my cursor. And as I hover over different colors in my image, you can actually see it highlights those colors here in my color panel. So as I hover these over, you can see that they're highlighted differently. So what this allows me to do is I can actually click on any color and drag up or down, and it's gonna increase the saturation of literally wherever I click. So in this case, you can see I'm working a lot with these yellows, but it's actually bringing in some orange, okay? We're gonna move over here, and I can bring this in, and this is gonna affect our greens and a little bit of our yellows. So that's the reason that I prefer to use this tool, is because a lot of the time you think, hey, trees are just green, right? But a lot of the time they're gonna have a little bit of yellow and maybe even some orange in them in the case of this area here. You can see bringing this up and down, it's actually moving my oranges as well. So I'm able to actually identify all of these different colors here and really bring in the saturations that I feel best represent my image. 
Okay, I can do the same thing with the background, bringing in those blues, fantastic. And I find that getting everything in the right saturation range really, really makes a big difference. Let's just go ahead and turn this off and on. So we're gonna use this little eyeball here. We're gonna turn that off and on and see what a big difference that makes. Okay, now again, you can do this with your hue, saturation, and luminance. So for instance, if you want your blues to be a little bit brighter, click here and you can make your blues even brighter. I think that looks fantastic. You can make these yellows a little bit brighter, which is gonna help them stand out there as well. And of course, you can go into your hue and simply go and you can change the hue. Maybe you wanna make it look like a fall color. People do all types of artistic coloring with this, like they wanna change the fo foliage color, they can do that. Um, you could change the hue of the sky, for instance, make it look a little bit more like a cyanotype. We're just gonna leave this a little bit more natural colors. I generally don't affect the hue as much. Now, there is one more view for this same tool, okay? So right here where it says adjust, this is by default gonna be set to HSL, hue, saturation, luminance. We can click here and just go to color, okay? Now with your individual color, you can actually just go through and click on the different colors in your image. For instance, I can click here on green and I can adjust hue, saturation, and luminance with just the greens. Now, the reason I don't use color as much is because I don't have the tool that I like, this tool here, that allows me to click on my photo and drag, okay? If you're gonna go with color, you have to go ahead and click on the exact color you wanna edit and then move the hue, saturation, and luminance based on that color. Now you do have this option here on the right hand side, which just lists all of your different colors. Okay. And you have hue, saturation, and luminance for all of them. But my favorite tool out of all these is going to HSL. I just like to go to all and then you go ahead and use this tool. So you have one for hue, you have one for saturation and one for luminance. Okay. And again, this tool is the one where you can click on it and then simply click here and adjust the hue, saturation, luminance for your images, and you can just click on your image, which I think just makes a lot more sense than using the sliders. Okay, now we've showed you this mixer, and this is gonna be the most powerful tool, but if you wanna go in and define your colors a little bit more, like you wanna get like very specific with an individual color range, you can move into what's called point color. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into point color. So don't forget, mixer is its own tool, and point color is a completely different color is a completely different tool rather. So with point color, first you start off by using this eyedropper. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this eyedropper here, and then we're gonna move into point color. We're just gonna to go to this yellow color, and you can actually click right here in this yellow color. There we go. If you don't get it exactly right, just do it again. There we go, click again. And you can actually add to your tools as well. So you can adjust this color, you can adjust this color, and I can go in here and adjust my blue color. So you can see we can add multiple ones. Now let's go ahead and work on this color here for, this is gonna be the yellows in the foliage range. Now here, I can adjust my hue, saturation, and luminance, and it's basically just going to target that exact color. So I can adjust my hue, as we can see, this is going to be working hue, okay? I'm gonna be working with saturation, that looks nice, and I'm gonna be working with our luminance shift as well. So this is gonna be working in addition to the tools that we worked on with the mixer. So if you don't get as strong of an effect as you want with your mixer, you can move into point color as well. This is nice because you can add multiple points here also. Now you can include to increase or decrease the color range, which will allow you to basically affect more or less of your image, okay? And you can also use this slider to work on your colors here as well. So you can see it's a little, little bit of a visual indicator on how those colors work. Let's go ahead and click on this blue where we clicked on it for the sky. I can adjust the hue here. I, I wanna leave that how it was because it looked pretty good. I can adjust my saturation, there we go, and I can adjust my luminance as well. Now, there's nothing wrong with using, there we go, our range bringing, there's nothing wrong with using both mixer and point color in the same photograph. I find that most of the time I'm able to get the results that I want with my mixer, but if I wanna enhance them a little bit more, then I move here into point color. Now there's one more tool that we're gonna show you how to dial in specific colors, and that's actually with your calibration. So we're gonna go ahead and close down our color mixer, and we're gonna go all the way down to the very bottom where we see calibration. Now, generally I tend to leave this alone, but some people do like to edit this. This will actually allow you to edit your, for instance, your green primary colors. You can take all the greens in your image and shift the hue to the left or the right. This is gonna be a nice subtle adjustment, and it can give you some really good results. 
I have friends who really like to use this calibration tool. They find it to be their most, uh, their preferred. So there's really no right or wrong. I just want to show you all the tools you can use to adjust specific colors. You could go into your red primary and adjust the hues for your reds. There we go. Keep in mind that red, green, and blue are making up all the colors of our images. So even though you can see I'm working with my red primaries, it's still affecting some of these oranges here that are in my foreground, okay? We're gonna work on our blue primaries and just kind of push and pull those as well. I think that's looking fantastic. So you can use all of these tools in combination with each other. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And I think this image looks amazing. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go into our history and we're just gonna go, you can see all of this, what we did, we're gonna move right back to right before we did the auto setting. So this is basically where we started here. <laughs> and here is where we ended up. So that's a big before and after. So I really do recommend hitting that auto setting. That's gonna give you a great start and then move into your hue, saturation and luminance. And then if you need even more color, you can go into your point color and really dial in those specific colors. But I find this is a lot more helpful than just cranking up the vibrant slider and saying, I want all the colors in my image to be bright because you can really choose and define certain colors that you wanna stand out. For instance, in this case, we did a lot with these yellow colors here and those really help those items actually stand out. Like if I go back to my original, I'm just calling back in my history here, you can see I really don't see much of a standout for these trees and things like that here. Even after I did the auto settings, they're not really standing out that much. But after we did all these individual settings, you can see, look how beautiful and vibrant all these yellows are within the greens. So we were able to target those and enhance them color by color. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, give us a big thumbs up, click on subscribe, we'll send you more free tutorials. And tomorrow we're going over color grading and Lightroom Classic has some of the best color grading tools of any software that I've ever used. So don't forget to stick around. We'll show you how to get it done tomorrow.